Hello and welcome to lesson number 2.1 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at how to add objects to the screen and how to do some basic manipulation of those objects. Uh, this is the most basic thing that you can do in Alice, uh, but in addition to simply putting objects on the screen, uh, Lesson 2.1 will aim to familiarize you with some of the terms that you're going to be hearing in a lot of the tutorials that we have from this point forward. You're going to see terms like object and subparts and methods and classes and you're going to hear these words. And so as we move through here, I'd like by the time Lesson 2 is over, for you to be able to identify those terms and understand what they are and how they relate to your programs. Now, the most important thing you can do as a beginning programmer is to understand why your programs work the way they do. I've seen some really cool programs and I've seen some students create some really neat things, but the things they've created were simply copied and pasted off the internet or they, they used so much help that when they were done, their project was really cool, but they had no idea why the project they created was working. So the aim of this whole tutorial series is to make sure not only can you make some really cool programs, but also help you understand why your programs work and how to apply that to other programming languages. So let's go ahead and get started with adding and manipulating objects. So I've got Alice open here. When you first open Alice, this is the typical starting screen that you'll see, and it usually opens to the Templates tab where you can select the world that you want to start creating in. You can also open previous worlds by selecting this Open a World tab here, or you can look at some of the worlds that you've had most recently open on the Recent World tab. But since we haven't created anything yet, I'm going to click on Grass and hit Open. Alternatively, if that screen doesn't pop up for you at startup and you get a screen that looks like what I'm looking at here, you can hit File, New World, and that will bring that same window open. If you don't want this to show up at the beginning every time, you can uncheck this Show This Dialog at Start selector button here, and you won't get this window every time that you open Alice. In order to start programming in Alice, you need to have objects in the world. When you start, you'll have three objects by default. You'll have the ground, which is the grass. You'll have a light source. You don't have to worry too much about the light source right now. Uh, just know that that is one of the objects. And then you also have a camera, and that's what you're looking at or looking through to see the scene that you're working on. But you don't have anything that you can add, change, or manipulate all that well, so we want to add objects. In order to add objects to our Alice world, click on this green Add Objects button. In this screen right here, you'll be able to add just hundreds upon hundreds of different objects and manipulate your scene in just innumerable ways. You probably want to first turn your attention down to the bottom here, where you have a list of categories for all the objects that you can put in your world. Now, there are ways to get more objects than this. Uh, one of my students' favorite uh, things to do is to add like weapons for first-person shooters and things like that. So on the Alice forums, you can add new objects if you don't like the ones that are there, and we'll get to that in a future lesson. You can scroll to the right, and you can see there's just dozens upon dozens of different categories of objects for you to pick from. I'm going to turn my attention over here, and I'm going to click on this Ancients button. And when I open the Ancients tab right here, I've got a list of all the individual objects that are part of the Ancients category that can be added to my world. If I ever want to go back to the Category screen, I can click on Local Gallery Core, and that will take me back to this screen. But I'm going to stay in Ancients for right now. So let's go ahead and add an angel to our world so that we can start looking at the properties of an object. Click on Class Angel, it will pull up information about that object, and click Add Instance to World. Our angel has now been added to our 3D world, and we can move this angel around in this view simply by clicking on her once. If you click on her once, 
you'll see a yellow box draw drawn around her. This is called a bounding box. This tells you the the parameters of the object, how wide it is, how tall it is. It gives you a visual representation of all that, and every object will have a bounding box. I can move the angel around the screen by holding my left mouse button and dragging the angel around the screen. It's important to remember that what you're doing is looking at a 3D world. So in addition to m changing the height of the object that is moving it up and down, you can move it further and closer. And when we get to a future video, I think it's Lesson 2.2, and look at Quad View, you can see that sometimes manipulating an object isn't as simple as it seems. Now with this arrow right here, I can move objects freely. When I drag my angel around, I'm moving her further away and closer and left and right. There's also some limiters that you can put onto your objects that are very helpful in positioning something for a scene. This next button right over here is the Move Objects Up and Down button. When I have that selected, my object will be limited to moving along the Y axis. That is, raising her elevation or lowering her, lowering her elevation. You can see if I move her too far down, she'll actually go through the ground. So the Move Up and Down limiter will help you adjust only the elevation of an object relative to the ground. The next button you'll see here is turn left and right. This will stop the object from moving. The angel will no longer move around the screen. She'll stay put, but this will allow me to rotate her to face different directions. Again, by clicking on her, holding the left mouse button, and moving it left and right to spin the angel around until she's facing the direction that I want her to be facing. The next button over, rotate the object forward and backwards. This is going to change the the leaning of the object. If I hold the button down, you can see I can make the object roll forward, roll backwards, and do complete circles. That button right there, again, doesn't change the location of the object. It simply changes how it's turned forward and backwards. This is the tumble selector right here. Tumbling will allow us to move the object left and right, or not move the object, but but spin the object left, left and right along with forward and backwards. So I can move the mouse left, right, up, and down. So I have a lot more freedom with how this object is being positioned. The next button over here is the resize object button. I can make the object bigger or smaller by clicking on it and moving the mouse up to make the, the object larger or down to make the object smaller. So now I've made my angel eh, the appropriate size here. The last button that's on here is going to be the copy object button. And when I click that button right there and then click on my angel and drag it, I'll get an exact duplicate of that object. Since I don't need my second angel, I'm going to delete the angel. I'm going to click on, oh, actually I'm going to make a uh, third copy of the angel because I still have the copy object button selected. So make sure you don't do that. I'm going to click on the move objects freely button. Now I have two objects to delete here. So I'm going to select angel number three. I'm going to come over and while I have this object highlighted, over in my objects panel here on the left, angel three is highlighted. This lets me know that angel three is the object I'm currently working with. If I click on angel number two, Angel 2 becomes highlighted. Since I want both to delete both of these, I'm going to right click on the object and select delete. I don't want Angel 3 either, so I'm going to click on Angel 3, and I can click on either the object in the objects panel or the object on the screen to select. The bounding box is around the correct object here. I'm going to right click and delete. So now I'm left with my original angel. So this angel is known as an instance. A single object on the screen is an instance. I could add a second angel like I did, and the angel number two would be another instance of the angel object. So every object that you have over here on the left is an instance. Now this angel would be pretty boring if that's the only pose the angel could have. Every object in Alice is made up of a number of subparts. 
you can see the subparts that an object is made up of by clicking the plus next to the object on the screen. When I click that plus, I can see that my angel object has a skirt category and a torso category. You can also see that the bounding box changes. This, tor this bounding box is around the torso area of the angel, and this bounding box on the screen is around the skirt area of the angel. Both of these have pluses next to them, so by clicking the plus on skirt, I can see that the angel is made up of a left foot and a right foot. Now, it's difficult to see right now because the angel's dress is covering the bounding box, but I can manipulate the left foot and right foot independently. Likewise, by clicking the plus on the torso, I can see the angel has an upper left arm, an upper right arm, a left wing, a right wing, and a neck. If I dig down a little bit deeper, I can see that the neck contains a head, and the head contains a left eye, a left eyebrow, a right eyebrow, and a right eye. The arms themselves are made up into other subparts. The left upper arm has a left forearm, and the left forearm has a left hand. These are what are known as subparts. You can manipulate subparts individually as well. Subparts are an important thing to keep paying attention to as you add objects to the world because they'll impact the level of detail your animations can have. For example, if I were to go back to my local gallery, select animals, and then scroll over to the right, and I'm going to select this cute little penguin right here, and I'm going to add the penguin to my world. I can click on the penguin and move the penguin independently of the angel, but when I select the penguin, oh, and occasionally you'll get this message that will pop up as well, it's a good idea to back up your save files. Uh, and if you haven't done it in 15 minutes, it will remind you. So I'm going to click Remind Me Later. But over here on the penguin, if I click on the penguin, I can see I can also open the head object of the penguin. But inside the penguin's head, I only have the ability to control the upper beak and lower beak. Whereas in the angel, if I went to the torso, the neck, the head, I can impact the left eye, the left eyebrow, the right eyebrow, and the right eye. These are all the objects that you'll be able to move and change and manipulate as you program. So I can tell right now by looking at this, if I wanted to make the angel wink, I could do it because I have control of her left eye and her left eyebrow. I might not be able to make the penguin wink because the eyes of the penguin are not individual subparts, which means as a programmer, I can't individually control the eyes. When adding these objects, I can also control the subparts individually inside this object edition screen. In order to do that, I'm going to check the box here that says Affect Subparts. What Affect Subparts allows me to do is select individual parts of an object. If this box isn't checked, when I click on an object, I'm always going to get the entire object. When Affect Subparts is clicked and I click on an object, I can get individual parts of an object when I click on it. Now sometimes it's difficult to get a hold of the right part. If I wanted to move just the angel's left wing, I can click on the angel's left wing, or I can go to the angel object in my objects panel to the left, scroll down until I find the part that I want, in this case the left wing, and select it that way. Now when I move the object, I'll be moving the object individually from the object. So I can take this wing and I can remove it. I could then take the right wing and remove it and be left with just a person. Now this might be part of an animation that I'm making that I want an angel to lose their wings. This gives me the ability to do that. Another important shortcut key to remember in Alice is Control Z. If you make a mistake you can hit Control Z to undo an action and put an object back to where it was. I might want to make the angel look at the camera without turning her torso. In order to do that, I'm going to select just the head of the angel. I'm going to turn objects left and right. And then with my mouse, I'm going to manipulate the head 
so that it's now facing the camera. I might want the penguin to be looking at the angel, and I can do that by selecting the head of the penguin, making sure that turn objects left and right is selected, and having the penguin look over to his right at the angel. This is the basics of setting up an initial scene. We're not doing any animation yet, however, to start an animation, you're going to want a scene set up already, and this is how you're going to do it. When you've got a scene that you're happy with, click Done. So there you have it, the basics of adding objects to a world in Alice. Now in the next lesson, we're going to look at how to use the quad view to properly position objects relative to one another. We're also going to look at some of the optical illusions that, that Alice can create because of the 3D space that you're looking at. Objects can appear a little bit missized and they can appear to be in places that they're not really at. We'll be looking at some of those challenges so that when you create your scenes, you'll be able to make them as realistic as possible. To make sure that you understand what we covered in this lesson and all future lessons, we will normally have what are called challenge programs at the end of a video. Now, by no means are you required to, to complete the challenge programs, but they're designed to use the skills from the video you just watched to see do you understand it? If you're able to complete the challenge program without problems, you know you've gotten everything you need and you're ready to move on to the next lesson. If the challenge programs prove to be too difficult, you may need to go back and watch this video or previous videos in order to get what you need to finish the challenge program. So let's take a look at the challenge program for lesson 2.1. Your Lesson 2.1 Challenge Program is simply to create an interesting screen. I've provided an example here. Now, interesting is definitely a debatable topic. This might not be the most interesting scene in the world, but it gives you an idea of the skills that you should be able to have to move on to the next lesson. I've come out of my Object Edition screen, and I'm going to go ahead and click Play to make this bigger on my screen. This window right here, after I click play, will allow me to play animations, which we'll do in the future, but I can also take screen captures of my scenes so that I can show other people if I want. The scene that I chose to create really has two things going on. I've got a group of penguins on the right trying to learn how to fly. I can see that one of my penguins has already failed and fallen over. I've got a second penguin who's in the process of trying to fly, and I have a third penguin who's looking at the other two trying to figure out what it is they're doing. I've also added two snowmen that can be found in the people directory of your objects gallery who are looking at a beach chair trying to figure out just what it is they're looking at. Again, maybe not the most interesting s scene, but all of the concepts we've talked about in Lesson 2.1 are here. I've added multiple objects. I've affected subparts by having the two snowmen tilt their head down to look at the beach chair. I've changed the orientation of an object by having the penguin fall over, and I've affected subparts of the penguin by having him raise his wings to look like he's flying. If you can create a scene like this, you're in good shape. If you have any questions, something's not working out for you, or you need a little bit of additional help, you're always welcome to leave a comment, and I will help you out any way that I can. As we move forward, the lessons will get a little bit more challenging, a little more involved, and by the end of this series, you will be a fantastic Alice programmer. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.